It is my year of breaking limit. This year you are breaking limit. In every area of your life, you are breaking limit. If you believe it, I'd like you to shout, I am breaking limit. If you believe it, it will be louder than that. I'd like to welcome you to this covenant day of marital breakthroughs. And in this service today, God is going to settle you maritally. Those couples that were introduced this morning to be married some few days from now is an indication that your own marital case is settled this year. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long you have waited. Before the end of this year, you will be joyfully married yeah. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The prophetic focus for the month remains godliness is profitable unto all things. Can somebody please repeat that? I believe it can be louder than that. And we'll continue in our series of teaching, Understanding the Cost and Cure of Ungodliness. Part 2. Understanding the Cost and the Cure of Ungodliness. The Bible speaking in Psalm 11, verse 3. It says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation is destroyed, the righteous is incapacitated. In other words, godliness is the foundation for every great destiny. There is no future for the crooked man, for the crooked woman. Godliness is the foundation. Now, you will agree with me that any house that does not have a strong foundation is just a matter of time, it will collapse. In the same way, if your destiny is not rooted deeply in God, now hear me this morning, I'm not talking about going to church. You can be in church and you don't have a foundation. If your foundation is not rooted in God, it's a matter of time that destiny will crash. In Psalm 37, verse 18 and 19, Psalm 37, verse 18 and 19, the Bible says very clearly there, it said, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. He said, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, in the days of COVID-19. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. The upright can never be stranded. The upright can never be put to shame. In Psalm 101 and verse 7, Psalm 101 verse 7, the Bible says there, He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. A deceitful man. A yahoo yahoo man. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my presence. That's to tell you how holy God is. He cannot behold iniquity. This is very, very important because we live in a world today where we have all manner of evil taking place. And it has become the normal thing. Now, everybody sees it as a normal thing. And so many people are joining that group. Please depart from them. Don't join them. There's a popular saying in the world where people say, if you can't, join, if you can't beat them, join them. Don't be part of such people, sir. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright I'd like you to walk in holiness. And like we said last week, holiness is a choice. It's not a gift. It's a choice that you make. You'll find all kinds of people duping people in business today. 
All kinds of things happening. People stealing money without caution. Private offices, in government offices, diversion of funds meant for the well-being of the people. Taxpayers' money being put in private pocket. People die just because maybe they don't have adequate access to medical care. We should be free. People due for promotion are denied because you want to sleep with such a person before such promotion can be granted. All kinds of evil taking place. People buying children. Pastors inflating attendance, stealing. All kinds of evil. Please, I'd like us to wake up that they are doing it does not make it right. Our God is a righteous God. Before God will bless you, you need to stand upright. You need to stand upright. Our holy God cannot work with unholy people. The faithful God cannot work with unfaithful men. It's important for us to understand that the wages of sin is death. No matter how little that sin is, it is programmed by the devil to destroy us. No one here shall be destroyed. Amen. I say no one here shall be destroyed. Amen. Among other things, ungodliness blocks our access to healing and health. These are the things that follows ungodliness. It affects our health. In Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 5 to 11, we had the story of the paralytic man there. And in verse 5, Jesus Christ said to us very clearly, that Jesus saw their faith when they wanted to bring him to the room. And he said, unto the sick of the past, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. In other words, sin was the reason why that man was in that state. Thy sin be forgiven thee. Sin is a reproach. Do you know that when you wear a white dress, the little black dot on that dress will easily be seen. That's how terrible sin can be. There are things you may be doing in the secret that you think nobody knows. God knows. And because God sees everything, men may not see everything. God sees everything. Everybody can see that you are going through this problem. Everybody can see that you are a good man, but God knows the heart of every man, for the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Except God. Sin blocks our access to durable riches. I'd like you to take note of this. Number two, sin blocks our access to durable riches. There are people that you see, they are rich today, tomorrow they are down. And you'll be wondering, what is happening? Is it the economy? No, sir. Like I said, anything that has no strong foundation in God, is a matter of time, it will give way. Psalm 112, reading from verse 1 to 3, the Bible is speaking very clearly. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3, it says, Blessed is that man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. He said, The seed of this man shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be domiciled in his house and his righteousness endure it forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. He won't be looking for money. Money will be looking for this man. When you are godly, hear me today, if God blesses you, there is no demon that can cause you. No demon can take that blessing from you because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22, the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and there is no sorrow added to it. I was young now, I am old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread. People of God, it pays to be holy. It pays. I pity people who walk crookedly, sir. I pity them. They are just simply digging their grave. It's a matter of time. Whatever is not right is not right. Don't have any business with it. 
Oh, can you bring some money there? We will change this uh, figure for you and all of that. No, sir. It is not the crookedness of a man that blesses a man. It is the blessing of the Lord. If God does not bless you, you are not blessed. Forget it. What you cheat, what you take from other people to add to your own, is what, what, it's not what makes you rich. It is the blessing of the Lord. Not the struggles of man. The blessing of the Lord. In other words, if God does not bless the work of your hand, you are not blessed. I've seen a man who bought a brand new car, sir. Brand new. Brand new from the factory. As he was going to put plate number, the engine knocked. Sir, I said from the factory. Brand new. Now, they opened the engine. There was engine oil inside. When I saw the man, I wasn't surprised because I knew where he was coming from. He's such a man that when he tells you good morning, you need to look at your clock to be sure that it's his money. It's not straight. The cause of the Lord is in the house of the thief. Please let us walk God. I'm saying this because many things are happening now. All kinds of things happening. People dying mysteriously. Nobody knows what is happening. People missing and all of that. God's judgment is already upon the earth. You need to clean up in order for God to show up in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. In Proverbs 8 verse 18, the Bible says, Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Durable riches and righteousness. It's not that you are rich today, then tomorrow they say you are former. No, you are not former anything. You are always there, constantly rich. The Bible says in that place where we are, it says, His seed, His seed endureth forever. That is, the blessing of this man has gone beyond this man to his children's children because it is rooted in godliness. Praise the name of the Lord. Ungodliness, number three, bless our access to help in times of trouble. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1 to 5, we saw the man there, Hezekiah, he was sick. And then he cried unto the Lord. And in verse 2, the Bible said, The Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto God and said, Look unto me now, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth. And with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. He knew where he was standing. He has not cheated anybody. He has not molested any man. He has not slept with anybody's wife. He knew where he was standing. There are people when they are praying, they know, they know. They know that the prayer is not going from where they are now. Because they know what they have done in the secret. Praise the name of the Lord. One pastor went to pray for somebody who was being possessed. And then when the pastor got there, he began to pray. And then the lady that was present was just laughing. And everybody was wondering, what is wrong with this lady? And the lady kept on laughing. The pastor increased the prayer. And all, from nowhere, the lady said, shut up! Everybody was looking at the pastor. What's the problem? They said, if everybody is casting anybody out, it's not people like you. I know what you do, my friend. Keep quiet. Paul, I know. Who are you? <laughs> Please wake up, wake up, wake up. Number four, ungodliness blocks our access to divine secrets. Please take note. It blocks our access. And the Bible speaking in Psalm 25 verse 14, the Bible said, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Psalm 25 verse 14. And he will show them his covenant. Now, I'd like you to link this to direction in life. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Those who are walking uprightly, those who are godly. The way to go in business, he will show you. The way to go when you come to a crossroad, when you want to make a major decision and you are confused, he will bail you out, sir. No, you can't be stranded when you are godly. You can't. It's not possible. All this one that the uh, pastor, you know, four men are asking my hand in marriage. I don't know which one. It's because you are not standing right. What do you mean you don't know? When you want to buy a dress in the market, don't you know the one you like? 
There is something wrong somewhere. Your antenna is not sharp. When you are going, listen, as they are coming, the Holy Spirit is telling you, no, this one is not the one. I mean, you, don't, you have not even prayed. A godly man is with God 24-7. The journey you don't need to go for, as you are embarking, he tells you, stay at home. There are people, before they hear God, they will need to pray, they will need to fast, they will need to bind, they will need to lose. I mean, when the cutlass is not sharp, you will need to put in more strength. That is what ungodliness does. When there are things that are hovering around you, it blocks your access to divine connectivity. And what you need is for you to live a very solid life so that even before you call, God will answer. It is my prayer this morning that we will all clean up in the name of Jesus Christ. How do I deal with the forces of ungodliness? Because ungodliness can be dealt with. How do we deal with it? Number one, we must crave for the endowment of the spirit of holiness. We must crave for it. For the spirit of holiness. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, Jesus Christ speaking, say, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, he said, Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You must crave for that spirit of holiness. Oh Lord, help me, I want to live a holy life. I want to live a righteous life. You must come to that point of recognition and to that point of decision. It is when you have made up your decision, that is when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you to enforce the decision that you have made. You must come to that point. Number two, we must engage the power of the blood for rescue. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Scripture speaking, they say, How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without support to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You must engage the power of the blood. Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him, talking about Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And we are face to face with the blood this morning. The blood of Jesus Christ. If Jesus couldn't live in sin and you are partaking of his blood, it automatically it means that you are not permitted to dwell in sin. Some people have said that it is not possible for a man not to live with, you know, without being a perfect person. It's, it's, it's a life. You can live a holy life. You can live a perfect life. You can live a righteous life. You can live a godly life. It's a matter of choice. It's a choice. Number three, we must continue in fellowship with the saints. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. He said, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. So much the more as you see the day approaching. Let us continue to fellowship together. And that is why we all need to belong to a church like this. Not only that, we also need to belong to a cell fellowship, just as we have been told this morning by God's servant. The home cell is the little church around you. When you are challenged, coming to the main church may be too far, but there is already a church close to you there. And so when we fellowship in that meeting, there are things that take place. God is the one that ordained it. And that's why I'd like you to please take advantage of the home self fellowship. Even as we even open more in this season. The home self fellowship is God's system of operation. He ordained it. And they were breaking bread and fellowshipping together day from house to house. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 46 and to 47. And the Bible said they were fellowshipping together. And they were praising God and God was adding to them daily such as should be saved. So there are testimonies that break forth as we fellowship together. 
I'd like you therefore to locate the nearest one close to your house, fellowship there, and see God's power manifesting in your lives in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to know that today that you have appeared in his presence, every trace of evil around you shall be terminated. God cannot behold iniquity. No, sir. He cannot. He cannot. On this day of our marital breakthrough service, whatever is a hindrance around your life, because you have come to a liberation commission today, God of heaven is going to terminate it in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to know this morning that your identity in life is unveiled in this book. Don't be bothered about what is happening around you. Your destiny is well captured, documented in this book. Therefore, anything contrary to this book must give way. Barrenness must give way. Joblessness must give way. Poverty must give way. Everything concerning you is here. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thought that I think towards you, thought of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Not a truncated end. An expected end. So your destiny is very bright. Tell yourself my destiny is very bright. If you believe it, it will be louder. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, how do you gain access to that destiny? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says there, according as his divine power has given unto us how many things? All. I didn't hear you. All. all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things. Marital settlement. You are not to be looking for a wife or a husband or husband. No, sir. All things. He has given unto us all things. Your children, all things. Your job, all things. But how will all things come? Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. Unto godliness, who has called us to glory, not to shame, and to virtue. All things. In John chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, This light, talking about the word of God, This light shineth where? In darkness, and darkness will not be able to resist it, to comprehend it, to stop it. Now, what am I talking about? God said you should be married. You should be fruitful. That is light. So when barrenness shows up, when you introduce this light in the midst of barrenness, you will be fruitful. So when family forces are raging around you that you will not be married, when you have the understanding that the word of God says he set the solid tree in families, the situation you are going through notwithstanding, you will be fully persuaded that you are getting married. Ay, man, light cannot stop darkness. Okay, I was married before and I was divorced and I don't know what to live again. No, sir, you can remarry. Is somebody hearing me now? The former things have come to pass. New things do I declare. Before they happen, I will show them to you. May God is not looking at your past to consult and bless your future, sir. Forget the former things. You were cheated. You were battered and beaten. Forget the former things. I will do a new thing. So God decided to do a new thing in your life today. Yeah. I'd like you to forget what has happened before. A new thing is happening today. I say a new thing is happening today. Yeah. Therefore, every challenge, marital destiny, such as marital delays, marital crisis of all forms, are manifestations of satanic oppression. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are forces that say you will not have it the way you want it, 
But the good news is this. The light shining from within you from today will pull down every satanic installation in your life. Amen. In Matthew 13, verse 28, Jesus Christ said, an enemy has done this. Whatever the enemy has done in your life today will be undone by God in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why encounter with the word is gateway to our deliverance. Encounter with the word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and the word healed them and the word delivered them out of their destruction. Therefore, our access to the revelation of the word concerning our glorious marital destiny guarantees our deliverance from the captivity of the powers of darkness. Psalm 119 verse 130. The entrance of his word giveth light and it giveth understanding unto the simple. In John chapter 8, verse 32, he says, You shall know the truth, and the truth that you know will what? Set you free. You are coming out today. <laughs> Revelation gives you elevation. When you have revelation, sir, you will be elevated. It helps you to see above principalities and powers. <laughs> and that's why we must understand that every child of God that so desires has the God-given right to be settled in marriage because it is our God that settles people in marriage. Psalm 68 and verse 6. Psalm 68 verse 6. The Lord settled the solitaries in families and he bringeth out those which are bound with chain. Proverbs 18.22 The Bible says there, He that findeth a wife, so they don't give you a wife, you go and find. He that findeth a wife, findeth what? A good thing. So marriage is good. Tell yourself marriage is good. It is in those days they go and give a man marriage, uh, give a man a wife. But not today. Today you go and look for. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth the favor of the Lord. So, marriage is good. It's a good thing. Genesis 2 verse 18. The Lord himself speaking. He said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Hear me today, sir. If you are still single and you are due for marriage, I'd like you to go back home today and talk to yourself. Your manufacturer said it is not good. There is no way you can live a fulfilled life as a single person. It's not possible. Me that created you, I didn't create you for loneliness. You may think it is working, but as you are going in the journey of life, you will be trapped. It is not, even God himself is not alone. When he, he said, let us, let us make man, let us. Spoke with the Holy Spirit, spoke with Jesus. Right? Let us make man. And on that basis, he said, it is not good for any man to be alone. Sir, if you are alone, you are already on your way to death. When Satan wants to destroy any man, he isolates him. That is where loneliness comes. He isolates you. Because when you are isolated, you have no access to counseling. You have no access to discussion with anybody. And he begins to feed you. And because you don't have an alternative source, you will believe everything he says. From nowhere, you just think that, look, why am I living? Nothing is working. I've tried business, it's not working. My marriage has failed. My children are wayward. Is there anything worth living? It's better I go and kill myself. And then you just go and take a rope and die. Just kill yourself for nothing. The world will still continue. Loneliness is the next step to death. It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make for him a help mate. So God says so, that marriage is good. And he said he will not withhold any good thing from them that do walk uprightly. Psalm 84 verse 11. He will not withhold anything good anything good from them that do walk uprightly. He will not. He will not. Therefore, every eligible single divorced widow or widower who desires good in marriage, I release that good thing upon your life today in the name of Jesus. 
Every marital delay, tension, storms, crisis come to an end in your life today. Amen. You believe it? Let me hear loud and say, Amen. What are the keys to commanding marital breakthroughs? There are keys to commanding marital breakthroughs. Remember, every thing in life has a key. Your car has a key. The door to your bedroom has a key. What is the key to marital breakthroughs? Number one, be in love and remain in love with God. Be in love. And remain in love with God. Be a great lover of God and in the process, you will find love in your marital pursuit. I've discovered in life that this is the number one thing you need to establish when it comes to marriage. Love God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible speaking there very clearly. It said, but as it is written... Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Things have been prepared for the lovers of God. Anyone who loves God will obey God. Please don't marry someone who does not pray. It's a risk. Don't marry someone who doesn't go to church. Don't marry any man, any woman who doesn't study the word. That is an accident going to happen somewhere. It's a major risk. Solomon loved the Lord. That was the beginning of his rising. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 3. Solomon loved the Lord. It was his love. Solomon loved the Lord. And afterwards, we are told that Solomon loved many strange women. First Kings chapter 11, verse 1. <laughs> His love for God shifted. He began to see all kinds of men, women. The ones from Ethiopia, Tanzania, South Africa. He began to see all kinds. And then vision became very blood. His beginning was God, but he ended up with strange women. And that was the undoing of Solomon. When you love God, he will lead you to the things he has prepared for you. And marriage is one of them. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. How many things work? All, all things. All things. All things. So love God. Love God. When you love God, God will add all these things to you. Don't join the sanctuary keeping because uh, you want to marry. No, it's a wrong priority. Love God, serve him because you love him, then he will give you the person you ought to marry. You can be in the ushering group, usher people in. The reason why you are ushering them is because you want people to be seeing you. They are seeing you, but they are not led. But when you love God, I mean, before you even stand, every, they are coming. They are just coming. They are just flowing. Love God. Love God. Love God. Love God. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two key for marital settlement. Be committed to kingdom advancement. Be committed to kingdom advancement. Matthew 6, 33. Seek you first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. And I'd like you to get the connections properly. Prepared, added. These things have been prepared. These things will be added. When you seek God and you are committed to advancing his kingdom. You are winning souls. You are bringing people to church. You are paying their transport fare to come to church. As you are doing the things of God, God will be busy perfecting everything that concerns you. All these things shall be added. Added. I spotted my wife while I was in the technical team in our church way back in Nigeria. It was in the course of service that I located her. When you serve, he blesses. He settles you. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Now, when you serve God, two major things are added to you. Number one, honor. And number two, favor. These two things you can't buy with money. Honor and favor. And incidentally, you need these two things for marriage. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and then obtains the favor of the Lord. Hear me today. It is on the basis of you, men, please hear me. You locating your wife, taking care of your wife, that we may go to favor you in your business. If you are taking good care of that woman, you will be experiencing great blessings. Taking care of her, not molesting her. Marriage has rules that you must comply with. No matter how rich that woman is, she's working in a very big organization. Her salary is fantastic. That woman is still expecting you to give her her monthly stipends. Don't say because she has money, you are not giving her anything. No, sir. You are the head of that home. It's not a title. The head means you are ahead. You must still give. Don't sit at home as a man and, and your wife is going to work. You are sitting at home. If you do that, you are on the floor. You are no longer the head. It's not that you are wearing trousers. That is what makes you the head. No, sir. The head means you are responding to the responsibilities in the home. You are the one paying the rent. You are the one paying the children's fees. You are the one settling all the bills. Not the woman. The man. The man. The man. If you want to maintain your leadership role in that home, please take up all the responsibilities as a man. It is on that basis that she will submit to you totally. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible speaking in Hebrews 13, 4, it says marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, it says, For them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So, it's important. Psalm 102, verse 13, it says, Now the time has come to favor them. Thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yet the said time is come. When you favor the things of God, God will favor all that concerns you. While I was serving God in that unit, I was trying to work out how will I get money to carry out my wedding uh, plan, not knowing that God already had prepared sir. The funding for that wedding, we spent close to half a million. I didn't put a dime in that work. Not one dime. Everything just came. You see, when you locate the right partner, sir, everything will respond because a certain king made the marriage feast for his son. The son didn't bring anything for the feast. It was the king who prepared everything. And he said, go and invite everybody. All things are ready. Please, I'd like you to serve God genuinely from today, sir. You'll be delivered from all this running up and down. Amen. How can you go and be borrowing money to wed? And then when you are at home, you are eating, the bank is knocking on your door. Hello, sir. The money for the ceremony, we are still waiting. You, you borrow this, borrow that, borrow car for the wedding day, borrow hall, borrow everything. Don't put yourself under unnecessary tension. Please. You don't have, you have located the woman, you don't have the money to do the ceremony. Come to the church. We pray for you. That's all you need. You don't need any ceremony. You don't need to feed people. Nobody will arrest you. Number three, desire to marry. We are looking at the keys to marital breakthrough. Desire to marry. This will stir up something positive in you and helps you to place value on marriage. This is very important. Now, a lot of people desire to marry. That is where it ends. They don't do anything towards fulfilling that plan. They just wait that things will work. Things won't work if you are not working. You must, first of all, have value for marriage. This is very important because most places in the world today, the reason why marriage is not working around them is because they don't have value for marriage. And whatever you don't value will never add virtue to you. No, sir. Some people, they say, well, if it works, fine. If you leave it at that realm, it won't work. 
You must value it. And it is on that basis you will be so careful to be diligent to ensure that it works. Now, you see, before I got married, I knew that marriage doesn't work by just carrying out the ceremonies. I know. You have to work it. If you don't work it, it will not work. So I was, I was careful. Now, a lot of the relationship, all the relationship I had before I married, none of them worked. And it was a device by the devil to make me believe that women are all the same. And I said, no, all women are not the same. If there is only one woman who is good in this world, she is the one I will marry. I'm telling you, sir, I made up my mind. From the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. But the violent take it by force. The good news is this. There are much more good people than bad people. So don't treat it with like a desical attitude. In Luke chapter 15, verse 8 to 9, Jesus Christ speaking there, Luke chapter 15, verse 8 to 9. He said, Eat that water, man, having ten pieces of silver. If she lose one piece, doth not light a candle. You see the first process? And then, after lighting the candle, looking for the piece, she couldn't find it. She took the next step. She swept the house diligently until she found it. So you don't rest until that man shows up. Don't say, well, you know, they declared it is the year of breaking limit. And you are quoting, it is my year of breaking limit. That is my portion. Don't do anything about it. If I, by December, you still be speaking that uh, it is my breaking limit. You take a step. Just like that woman. You lit, light a candle. You go through scriptures. Lero sapari andara. This is September, Lord. This thing must come to pass. La roshata. What next must I do? You don't give it rest. Though you are at rest, but you are walking. Because if you are waiting without walking, you will be wasting. Somebody is delivered today. Amen. Number four key. Pray for direction and speed. We are in September now. So you need speed before the end of the year. You need direction and speed. Abraham servant prayed for speed while seeking for Rebekah in Genesis chapter 24. Verse 12 and then verse 15. He said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. And verse 15, as it came to pass that before he has done speaking, before he finished speaking, behold, the baker showed up. This week, your spouse is showing up. Yeah. I don't care where he is in any part of the world. God is going to organize his coming to South Africa here, wherever you may be. Something must happen that will make it to have divine connectivity this week. There's going, your path will cross this week. I say your path must cross this week. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I decree supernatural speed of accomplishment for everyone on the line for marital settlement this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every confusion around you is hereby removed. Every hindrance, every demon standing in your way, they are hereby operated. In the name of Jesus Christ. No one here will enter into any wrong relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ. And number five, beware of pride. It's a silent killer. Beware of pride. James chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible speaking there very clearly. But he giveth more grace. God resists the proud. But giveth grace unto who? The humble. Beware of pride. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 says, I was in the spirit in the last day and had a voice behind saying, Be in the spirit. Beware of pride. Don't use the current status of that brother to judge him today. Though he doesn't look like somebody who has potential. But look at him critically. Look at the potentials he carries, the zeal, the commitment, the discipline to life. Look at it. Don't say, I can't marry any man who is not rich. Are you rich yourself? You are looking for a ready-made product. You yourself, are you ready? 
If he doesn't have a car, I won't marry him. You will stay long ago. <laughs> you have to work together. A home is built together. Don't wait. If it is a marriage, you are looking for a settled home. You just want to go and enjoy it. It won't work, sir. You will be disappointed. The only people you may be seeing at the end of the day may be Yahoo Yahoo boys. And they will disappoint you. Please, women, any man who does not show financial commitment is not safe for you to marry. It's a risk. Any man who doesn't show financial commitment, you are still in courtship and the man is coming every day. Please, can you give me 2,000 rand? I will give you back two weeks' time. Can you give me another 10,000? I'm expecting some contract. So you have set the foundation for destruction. Don't use your money. Women, please hear me. Don't give your money to any man. Don't give your money to any man. Don't give your money to any man. If he's not working, check him out of your environment. Otherwise, you are going to pay the house rent. You will pay all the children's school fees. You will be paying all the bills till you die. I'm telling you, sir. Money is one of the major ways to know the heart of any human being. Money. So if now that you are not married, he's borrowing your car, why should you give him your car? Let him trek. In the course of trekking, all his senses will wake up. Does it make sense? The man you want to marry is trekking. You, the woman, you have a car. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And that's the man who is supposed to be your head. Before I got married, I never borrowed money from my wife, sir. No. I trekked. There's nothing wrong with my leg. There's no kilometer. There's no speedometer there. Nobody will arrest me. And she had money. But I have looked at myself. How can I be borrowing money from my wife? It's like you collecting money from your children. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Not say, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have COVID now, you know, pandemic. And because uh, the way things are, you know, uh, we need to check the pros and the cons. All those are jargons, my friend. Go and work and have money. It is when you have money, you are discharging your responsibility. That's the only way that woman can submit. Hear me today. That's the only way. It's not by prayer. It is you responding to your abilities around you. You won't need for, to pray for submission. The woman, anytime you say sit down, she will sit down. Stand up, she stand up. Why? Because you are the one paying the bills. But if she's the one paying the bill, you are the tailor. I hope you are hearing me, sir. Okay. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. Number six, finally, and get the power of faith. And get the power of faith. Mark 9, 23. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Please note today that destiny answers largely to our mentality. Proverbs 23 verse 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, mentality, you must have the mentality that you are getting married this year. Not only that, that you will not be divorced when you are married. You must be settled. See yourself as breaking the chain of marital spell today. Amen. When you see any mountain, you cannot remove them. Start climbing that mountain. You are not helpless. Turn your obstacles to miracles. Turn every stumbling block to stepping stones. Confront your battles in order for you to conquer them. Stop waiting for things to happen. Rather, begin to make things to happen. Today is your day. If you look around you, there are people who have been married and the marriage is working. So what is, it, what is it that is making it to work? It is by then giving diligent cares to the details of marriage. Nothing more. It's not Satan. Satan, you don't have any business with Satan. Satan is only taking advantage of your ignorance. And that's why you need to go for light. Today your story is changing. Amen. By this communion today, what do we expect? As we partake of this communion, number one, I'd like us to know that the primary purpose of the Holy Communion is to empower believers to live like Christ, spirit, soul, and body. First Thessalonians chapter 
5 and verse 23. The communion is designed by God to empower every believer. The scripture says there, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, Paul speaking, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, everyone should expect fresh manifestation of the lifestyle of Christ today in holiness, in sanctification, in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ was never sick. So you are not permitted to be sick. Christ-like, that's the meaning of Christians. And so you are taking his flesh and his blood, and by reason of that, what we couldn't see in the life of Jesus must not be traceable to you. No, sir. Not even headache, you must not have it. You can't be partaking of his flesh and blood and still be sickly. It's not possible. The zeal of God must come upon your life today. The wisdom at work in Christ must be at work in you. And that is to let you know that our coming face to face with the flesh and blood today is giving us a brand new life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We are going to be rising up very shortly and we are going to be taking grace today. Grace to live a holy life, a sanctified life, a purified life, in order for us to assess the blessings that God has ordained for us. And not only that, we are also going to receive grace for help because we all need help on a daily basis. And this help will enable us to fulfill our marital destiny or whatever it is that is challenging your life. I'd like you to get set for that shortly as we rise up to pray. But before then, you are here this morning, you are not born again, I'd like to pray for you. That is where the journey of this settlement start. You need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says there very clearly, John chapter 1 verse 12, but as many that have received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even as many that call upon his name. If you have to make things happen in your life, you must have a personal relationship, a personal walk with Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 3, Jesus Christ was in the midst of the people, and one man noticed that the things that were happening around him were not normal, they were not natural. And Nicodemus went to him and said, Master, I've observed the things happening around you, and I've discovered that no man can do these things that you do, except God be with him. And Jesus Christ gave him the solution. He said, hey, you can only do these things except you are born again. Except you are born again. That is a change of status. A change of levels. When you are born again, you begin to live like Christ. And as you are living like Christ, crisis departs away from you. You are here this morning, you are not born again, I'd like to pray for you. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church, it doesn't matter the title you carry, if you are not born again, you are not born again. Wherever you are, I'd like you to rise up on your feet this morning. I'll pray for you. I'll lead you to Christ. And in case you are watching from your home, wherever you are, in any part of the world, you know you are not born again. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like you to rise up on your feet this morning. And also, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ and along the line you backslid you return back to the world. You now have returned to living in sin. I also want to pray for you. Wherever you are, please rise up on your feet and please do pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I didn't hear you clearly. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning as a sinner. Wash me with your precious blood. Let all things pass away. And let everything become new in my life. I confess you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Now I know I am born again. Amen. Father, thank you for the life of these precious people that you have brought to yourself this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, that your grace that brought them out this morning, let that same grace sustain them till you come. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. From today, Lord, give them a new beginning. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed.